Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and in this video, I want to talk briefly about dynamic arrays and their integration with charts. Uh, sometime in, I think, fourth quarter of last year, maybe September, there was an update to the beta channel, which allowed charts to then respect more or less spewed arrays. You know, charts became very dynamic, that based on, you know, either the shrinking or the expansion of the arrays, the chart responds accordingly. I picked this from the release notes, you know, I just pasted it here verbatim. And it says that this feature enables users to link charts to dynamic array calculations, which can produce results of variable length. That's the keyword. Okay, variable length. The chart will automatically update to capture all data when the array recalculates, rather than being fixed to a specific number of data. Let's try and put, you know, some visuals to that text there. Now, look at this data set I have, which is just like salesperson and then monthly data. Right. Normally, if you wanted to set this up to be dynamic, most people may have to create, you know, a chart that has 12 points already because you want to have January to December. And when you choose something lesser than that, I mean, in terms of number of columns, OK, it still works, but gives you a lot of white space. But now you will see that the chart respects, you know, the chart area and just fills it up dynamically. So look at August, you see. OK. And look at November, you know, that way. So it works seamlessly. But the question is. How did I create this? Let me show you. Very simple. When it comes to creating dynamic ranges, first of all, which is the starting point, you know, there are many ways to do it. Most people would use, you know, back in the day, maybe using an index function. You could use an offset. Well, you could also use an XLOOKUP. But the first thing is this. This is a little tricky because somebody is going to make a selection here. And if a person makes a selection, you need to figure out, you know, where that column is. Okay. So if you want to figure out where match is in this data set, simplest function you can use is a match, but I'll use an X match. Okay. So I'll do, oh, what did I type? Okay. X match. <laughs> then I select, you know, this cell and I'm checking not just from, you know, January. I'm going to start from the very beginning because I want salesperson to be included in, you know, my results. Okay. So this tells me four. So it's, returned in the fourth column, right? So fourth column, but the third month. But well, that's fine. No confusion there. You can then feed this into the take function. Okay, I'm just trying to be Office 365 compliant. So take, select the entire range. Now you're not using this as the rows because you're using this as columns. So you skip that and you do columns, okay? Now you close the bracket. You have a range that is dynamic, right? Let's change this to August. Okay, fine. You know what the take function does? It just says that from, you know, the leftmost column, pick this number of columns. Okay, so if you say take in this whole array, comma four, it means give me four columns starting from the leftmost column. So now that I have this, I'm just going to put up a chart based on this, right? So let's go to insert. Uh, let's see, recommended charts. Okay, no, all charts. Let me just pick mine. I'll pick a stacked column chart. I want one. Yes, this is fine. So that shows me, you know, the months. Okay. So now you can see that this is January, February, March. Now, if I change this to like October, before that would be a challenge, right? Because you set this up for three points. Now you're increasing it to like 11 or 10 points. You know, what do you expect the chart to do? But now the chart automatically expands based on, you know, the spewed array. So if you do here, September, you can see that that expands accordingly, right? If you pick December, that goes all the way and you can come back and pick something you want, right? So it's just respecting, you know, whatever, you know, your spilled array is. And that, for me, is really cool. There's also something I did, you know, on the previous one that you must have seen, which is also making the chart tie to a little dynamic. This is some old school thing, but well, I might as well show you. What I want to be able to do is to say at every point, oh, this is January to March, January to April, based on the selection here. So it's simple. What you do is you just create the string you want, maybe in a cell, for example. I could do, um, I want to say, I want to show something that looks like this. January, you know, to, um, so let me put the space. That's, that's what I want to do. Okay. I want to then concatenate this. So this is like saying January space dash space and whatever month the person selects. And then I need to close that bracket there and then say maybe sales data, something like this. Okay, so let's see, right? So if you change this, you know, to June, okay, you can see that this changes. So what you do is you just link the title to that cell. So go into the formula bar after selecting the chart title, and then you point it to this cell. Okay, so now you can 
make your selection let's change this to october and you can see that the chart title is dynamic as well something very simple but i just thought to show it okay the other way i would create you know my dynamic range is to use x lookup which isn't you know the function that many people get to use but once you realize that x lookup returns a range or a reference then you understand why it's very handy when it comes to creating dynamic ranges. I've said this in so many webinars that I'm starting to sound like a broken record. That X lookup returns a reference or a range, not a value, right? So now, let's apply the same principle here. I'm having a selection of July here, and I want to figure out, you know, where is July in this whole thing and return the data for July, for example. I can use my X lookup. So I do X lookup. I say look for July and say look for it here xlookup can figure out you know what column you know july is found in right and i say after you found it i then want you to return pretty much this it's kind of doing like you know an intersection so it's going to try to figure out where july is once it figures out where july is which is here and now i'm saying return everything is going to return just those rows in the column of july so let's press enter here first and see. so you can see that for july it goes from 143 to 116, which is correct, 143 to 116. Let's change this to another month just to test October 329141. Okay, 329141. So it's fine. So now our X lookup is returning at least the month of interest. But what we need it to do now is to select, you know, from the leftmost, you know, um, column in our source data, which is starting from here and then all the way to whatever it returns. So how do you do that? Once you know that XLOOKUP returns a range, it becomes easy. You just go and you select the leftmost cell there, which is this cell, and you put a column reference, right? Because it's basically like saying, if this was a range, maybe XLOOKUP was returning K12. You're just saying B3 to K12, basically, okay? And you do enter. And now you see that we have a dynamic range. I don't need to plot a chart here, I mean, you already know that that's going to work. And they're using XLOOKUP to also create, you know, uh, the dynamic range, which the dynamic chart, you know, can then uh, feed off. Okay. So let me come back here and just show one more thing that you could also do, which is sometimes using like, you know, an ActiveX control. So instead of using maybe this drop down, for example, but now in this case, I'm not going to, you know, really rely on this um, dynamic title because I'm going to just you know, kind of mess that up. So I'm just going to take that out. I want to use an ActiveX control. Here, I'm going to go to the developer tab. Let's do insert. Let me use a scroll bar. Yeah. Sometimes the icon with the spin control can confuse you. So what I want to be able to do here is this. That whenever I click, you know, I want to be able to move, you know, from January to December by just, you know, advancing on the scroll bar. So let's format this scroll bar a little. So let's do format control. So now what you want to be able to do is this, that whenever you select a number, so like, okay, the first, you know, selection there will be January. And you know that January, based on this result, is coming from column two because the first column is the salesperson and is needed. So I can say the minimum value for this control should be two. Two corresponds to January here. And obviously the maximum value will be 13. Instead of one to 12, it's two to 13 because I'm including the salesperson's column, okay? And then... I say incremental change of one, yes. I say, you know, page change of one as well. Cell link is just a cell that will show you, you know, what number you are on based on the selection of the scroll bar. So I could just put maybe here, you know, somewhere I can see it, but it doesn't need to be seen. Most times it's hidden, but it's okay. You know, this is just for demonstration purposes, right? So now you see that if I click this, okay, it goes to three, it goes to four, it goes to five. You can see that. So what we are just going to do is, for this dynamic array that we have here, where we did this whole X match thing, instead of relying on the X match, because the X match was working based on, you know, using a drop down here, picking from this, I want to pick, you know, based on the number that the scroll bar outputs. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to just take out this X match, you know, bit of it, and I'm going to point it to this cell. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Right. Oh, sorry about that. I think I messed my comma up. I think I copied more than what I needed. Okay, good. All right. So fine. Okay. So now you can see, even though, yes, it's a little, the five here is just telling you, you know, the number of columns. Like I said, this is not going to be visible. So it's not something, you know, you're going to see. And if I want to just, you know, take your mind off it, I just put it behind the chart. Okay. 
well. So now you can see that once you advance, you know, on the scroll bar, you know, it's adding, you know, well, a month as you go. Then the same thing. So basically the same thing, but this one looks a little more fluid than using the drop down because you have to click and select here. You can just click left, right, or if you just even select, you know, a particular portion and then it goes, you know, all the way there. So this isn't really about, you know, dynamic charts and it's not, you know, meant to be an expensive ex extensive that's the word not expensive extensive you know um lesson on dynamic chat but it was really just to highlight the fact that you know chats are now linked very well to you know spilled arrays in a way that when the dynamic array you know contracts or expands the chat you know, responds accordingly so you can you know take some of the simple ideas i've used here to build you know some very interesting you know, visuals or reports. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. For now, 